Hello everybody and welcome once again to my next blog post. My first blog post in a while and uh, it's good to be back at it. Uh, I was given an interesting project the other day. Uh, let's take a quick look at it here. It's a short shot of a car that comes from off screen and squeals to a halt there. Uh, the project was that they wanted to do some replacement and the replacement specifically was getting rid of the uh, rims that were on there, putting new rims on, changing the roof of the car from white to black and changing the um, uh, side mirrors on both sides also from white to black. So I thought about it for a little while and it ended up settling on three different methods that I was going to use so that I can get the desired outcome. And the first was the 3D camera tracker, new to After Effects CS6. Uh, the next one was the uh, roto brush tool and the third one was brute force keyframing. Uh, so let's uh, first take a look at the 3D camera tracker. I was hopeful that the camera tracker would be able to help me in the shot a little bit. Even though it's not optimized and not optimal for 3D camera tracking, you can see that the camera itself actually stays still. It's the object in the shot that's moving. So what I did is I right-clicked and chose Track Camera on the, uh, the layer. It'll analyze in the background and once it does the analysis then it'll solve for the camera. Now I found that uh, when, uh, when I did that, if we scroll along, the camera has been solved but there are no tracking points here or very few anyway, certainly none that are usable. You can see some down there just on the floor. It's not until this point right here at a certain point, the camera did uh, figure out some camera tracking points that could use, and it created a camera uh, a point cloud that we could use. Now, what I discovered is that although there aren't there isn't that much information that I could use, there's enough that it could simplify the project uh, somewhat. What I did is I used all these points that are around the uh, tire. Right click and create solid and camera. And then I took that solid that was created and I went to my wheel composition, it's just a plain old spinning wheel, and I alt dragged that onto the uh, solid that had been created there. Now we can't see it here yet because I have to scale it up and I have to rotate it. Okay, so there you go, we can see uh, the, the new rim right there, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit more. And obviously a lot of work went into kind of tweaking and fine tuning the uh, uh, the particulars to make it look as real as possible. Uh, but now if we take a look at what we've got here and we drag it, you can see from this point on there's a little bit of a shake to the car that it happens. You can see it bouncing up and down. And because I got a successful track on there, then the rim that I put in works perfectly. Uh, it saved me a fair amount of time so that I didn't have to keyframe this uh, little joggle movement here by hand. I could let the solved uh, camera uh, do that. Now the trouble is that before this, well, it'll just disappear, there were no tracking points and so there was no solved 3D camera so I couldn't automatically replace right here. In that case what I had to do was uh, keyframe that on uh, uh, manually. So let's take a look at the final uh, comp here. We'll go down to the bottom. This right here is the 3D camera that I created and here is the wheel that I created. Okay, And you can see that, I'll we'll just zoom in a little bit so we can take a look at the wheels, you can see that it joggles back and forth just perfectly with the move. Okay, At the point where I lost the uh, camera track, what I had to do is I needed to um, duplicate the, uh, the rim that I have here and make it into, yeah, you got it, I'll hit the U key and you'll see that it is uh, manually positioned, uh, scaled and rotated so that it'll match up with the movement of the car and that it will, once it hits the end of that shot and the start of the 3D camera track, lines up perfectly right there. Okay, So that was a kind of a bit of a hybrid of using the automation and 3D camera tracking tool and just brute force keyframe and the thing. Uh, so I did that for every one of the tires. If we go back up to the uh, rear tire here, you can see that at this point I used the camera tracking again with the movement of the car. And then I uh, did brute force uh, keyframing for before that, right there. You can see position, 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 and rotation, of course. So that did that, uh, solved that. I also, of course, did the same thing with the tires when they were uh, up here on the other side of the car. The next thing that I had to do was uh, work on the uh, roof of the car. So what I chose to do there is use the roto brush tool. Right, so go to the uh, let's see car source. I'm just going to duplicate that. I'm just going to quickly walk you through what I did here. Uh, with the car source layer selected, you go up to your roto brush tool and double click on the source because you got to do it on a layer. 
and I'm going to go to the toggle alpha boundary. Okay, so you just to tell After Effects what the inside and the outside is. In this case, oops, I didn't uh, do a very good one there. In this case, I'm just going to do uh, this will be really quick, of course, but you draw the inside, and we got a fairly good um, uh, estimation of the boundary right there. And you hold down the Alt key if you're on a PC, and you do the same thing for the outside. It's telling the tool what you know is the inside of your shot and what is the outside of your shot that you want to cut out. So once we do that, we end up with yeah, not a bad. You can see as we scroll along, we're getting a pretty good uh, roto happening there. Now, it's certainly not perfect because you can see as we back up here, you can see that it's uh, as you go frame by frame, it just kind of gets all messy and disappears. So all you got to do there is you just go frame by frame and you got to tell it After Effects which uh, what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep you know so a little bit of a process there to go through frame by frame and make sure that you get a good roto but once you've got that uh, then you've got a pretty good um, um, mat with which you can create well let's go over to the composite here uh, the let me just close the layer and we'll take a look at the car source okay so uh, I'm actually using that. I ended up with a black and white mat, okay, by using the Roto tool, and I used that. Let me just turn it on so you can see it. There's the mat right there, and I used that as a uh, an alpha mat on uh, uh, an adjustment layer, uh, just so that we could uh, I could control the color of the of the the bottom that way. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off. And then what I did is I duplicated that because. If I just wanted, I didn't want the top to be just black. You can see it's really unnatural looking, right? So I duplicated the uh, the roto that I had, and I applied the uh, levels effect to make it bright colored. Okay, I'll just turn that on, and you can see right here it l looks like there's a light that's reflecting uh, off of the big uh, lights that they would have used when they actually photographed the car. And if you move it along, you can see there's the highlight right there and right there and as the camera there the car moves into the shot those highlights travel along really naturally even though there isn't really any animation that's happening on those uh, it makes it look like and gives it a certain dimensionality uh, just so that it's not a plain old black roof right it's got some highlights and it works really well with uh, the lights that would have been off the side here so that was the roof. That was a little bit of a challenge. It took a lot of tweaking for the roto brush, but ultimately I think it worked out okay. Now the uh, final two elements that had to be changed were the mirrors here. And these mirrors, there was nothing that I could find that was working to automate it. So what I had to do was, I had to go, you got it, frame by frame, creating a math mask and animating it frame by frame. Let's just zoom in and we can take a little look at how that worked itself out. So you can see with every shot, I had to move them. Now it wasn't too bad because the actual shape remained fairly consistent as I was moving along. Uh, I just had to move the, uh, the vectors into position so that uh, it matched up you know, the way that I wanted it to. So um, the other thing about that was I, what I didn't want to have was like the roof, I didn't want to have just a plain old black um, uh, mirror, right? It had to have some, some um, uh, um, uh, dimensionality to it. So I duplicated that and I added another mask to it and you can see there's the blue mask right there and on this layer I actually changed the fill to light so if I just you know, solo that one you can see this is what I masked off here and then that blue mask that I was using same thing I just keyframed that so that it moved with the red keyframe which was the main keyframe and you can see we just get a nice little halo that moves and uh, gives a little bit of roundness and dimensionality to the uh, the mirror itself right so if we take a look at it I'll just hide all everything there you can see that with a little bit of motion blur we ended up with a pretty good representation of a mirror turning from white to black so uh, let's see, I did that for both of the mirrors. I uh, did the, all the wheels and everything. I changed the roof on that. And we ended up with a shot that was a replacement for the original in that the tires got changed, the mirrors got changed, and the roof gets changed. So there you go. I uh, hope that was helpful uh, using 3D Camera Tracker and the Roto Brush tool along with brute force keyframing to uh, make changes to a uh, shot. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll talk to you later.